right, guys, what are we doing this morning? Well, we're gonna take a look at the Steel City Cutlery Fang. This is that Pical self-defense knife, dedicated self-defense knife that I talked about in the five fast self-defense knives video. This is a great, great knife. Uh, I have to do the YouTuber thing. I'd like to remind everyone this channel is self-sponsored. It's sponsored through the affiliate links you find in the description. So if you're looking for knives, you're looking for gear, you're looking for tools, there's a lot of stuff down there, including Blade HQ, uh, VPN, and a coffee company. Coffee brand coffee, no politics, no pandering, just coffee. So guys, let's take a look at this from above. So let's turn this around. But first, you guys turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. guys like i said in the initial little short clip we did about this video this is a very very purpose driven knife this is a self defense tool only this is not something you're going to use or carry just for edc purposes this is not a very good knife in that i mean you could i suppose use it like this it's just not real real comfortable for that it's not what it was designed for so this is a full-on pical knife now there's not a lot about this because this is a full custom it's not like i have a spec sheet that i can put up over here so we're going to talk about this this is triple tempered double quenched aebl with a g10 grip that is very very comfortable when held correctly uh, it's hand ground. It's done by Steel City Cutlery. So we are going to get a couple specs, but I'm, this isn't going to be a super long video because there's not much to be said about this, but it is incredibly good for the purpose it was designed for. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll get some, we'll get some blade stock thickness, we'll get some, uh, some weight, and then we'll take a look at the entire package. So, all right, hang on just a second and we will get the calipers and the scale. All right, I already zeroed my calipers out on my feeler gauge. So blade stock thickness on this is right at 0 .1, 0 0.143. And then behind the edge thickness, I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but it's, it's in that Goldilocks zone, 0 0.02. Three, let's see, it is hand ground. It might have some variations. Let's see what it is at the tip right behind. 0 0.0265. So yeah, I mean, you know, you get some inconsistency with hand ground knives. We'll look at that on one of my custom knives when we do a video about it, since I have all three of Tino's customs here that I made for him. Um, so let's go ahead and get the scale out and take a look at the weight. And we'll do weight of just the knife and weight of full package, because I mean that's kind of important for a lot of you guys that are really big on how much weight and how much gear you carry. Let's take a quick look at this. So in ounces, you are looking at for just the knife, two and five eighths ounces knife in sheath as it would be carried with the ulti clip, four ounces even. So in grams for you guys, that is full piece, full package, 115 grams for those of you that don't use freedom units and just the knife you are looking at 76 grams so it's not very heavy at all as a matter of fact it's not much difference in between and let's see 76 grams 38 grams it's i mean it's half but it's still like this is a really light package by itself so yeah, I knew a friend that had a light package. Let's go ahead and get the scale out of the way. All right, guys, so we have to look at, uh, typically these knives that you see, the sheath is kind of an afterthought. So the knife comes out of the sheath and it goes over off to the side. But in this case, this is very, very much a system. So it attaches with an ulti clip. The ulti clip is now one of my favorite attachments uh, on any tool. I do, I am a fan of for scout carry. Um, the soft loops on a lot of stuff, but for stuff that you want to pocket carry, this opens that up for you. So very thought out. This uh, sits in your pocket, and since it's an ulti clip, it can be ambidextrous, left side or right side. Uh, since I'm right-handed, this came perfect for me. It will sit right down in your pocket. You clip that right on the top part of your jeans pocket, and there you go, and this is nice and stable. Sits nice and flat up against the inseam of the pocket, and then you have just a grab-and-go tool. 
Um, really, really good idea to go with the Ulti clip as opposed to some other, like a tech lock or something like that. This provide for this specific knife, perfect thought. Uh, well molded, nice, tight, good retention uh, on this Kydex sheath that uh, that the, he made over at Steel City. By the way, Steel City uh, Steel City Cutlery is on Instagram. If you want to pick one of these up, I think he said that they are. Give me just a second. Two hundred and eighty or two hundred and thirty five. They start. This starts at two hundred and thirty five dollars. Hand built, handmade, custom. Um, and just because it is a purpose built specific tool, he didn't he didn't shy away from doing some fancy uh, work on the G10 grip. It is G10 pins, so it is pinned in, not just epoxied. And like I said, once you get this thing in hand, you're like, okay, that makes absolute sense. So this is going to be something that if you are on the ground and your life, you feel as though your life is in danger and you pull this out of your pocket, it requires no real thought. This is something that you're going to be able to drag across ribs, down the back of an arm, across the face, however, whatever you need to do to get yourself out of that situation. And he specifically told me that this came from a point where he did, you know, he was attacked and this was designed based on what he would have wanted in that situation. Uh, the gentleman also said that he has studied the edged arts for a lot of years, as I have, but a Pical was never something I ever really thought about. Uh, different martial arts, even though I took bladed arts uh, and bladed weapons training, uh, are, are taught differently in different forms and systems. And this absolutely, after getting it in hand, 100% makes sense to me. I understand why Bobby D, who's going to get this knife next, uh, talks about them all the time. I understand why they're popular. I would look at getting one of these if it wasn't for the fact that I don't have as much training in the arts that this would be more prevalent in. But I can see it just being a common sense kind of tool. It's like adding a claw to the back of your hand. Everyone knows how to hammer fist. If you can hammer fist, then you can drag. You've got something right there that is incredibly, incredibly well thought out and purpose built and simple. Very, very simple. Simple is sometimes best. Uh, the more you add to something, the more complexities, uh, the more difficult it gets. That's why fixed blades are so much better an option in a tactical situation than a folding knife. But when it comes down to it, the best tool you have is the one you have. Um, I really do like this a lot. I never really thought I would like a Picol. I've seen them. I've handled them. This is the first one that really got to where I was like, okay, yeah, I get this. And the fact that it's so easy to carry, so easy to deploy, if it's in your pocket, straight up, and it's in the grip. Um, you don't have to manipulate anything. You don't have to do anything. Like I said, it's not something that would be something I would carry as a day-to-day -day tool for use. This is one of those knives that kind of starts to blur that line between tool and weapon. And I don't ever like to really say that because then that brings in, oh, well now, yeah, that makes 100% sense why we have knife laws. But I don't really think it does. This can still be used. This is still a tool. In a pinch, you can still use this for you know, opening packages and stuff if you need to. But that's not what it's for. And I wouldn't want to to be doing that. I would, I would like to just keep this as a specific purpose tool. Um, that being said, it is uh, for as simple as it is, it's attractive. I like the fact that he didn't try to get too fancy. You still see the grind lines you can see this was a hand ground knife. I like that rough, raw, rustic look to it. Uh, and it does look interesting. Um, the only issue I would have with it, see, there are a lot of legalities with carrying a fixed blade in a lot of areas. The problem I have with this, um, I can carry this knife concealed in my pocket, no problem. In California, in San Diego, by law, this is a fixed blade and I have to carry this exposed or now I have broke the law. I don't understand the difference. I don't understand what the difference in the convention is between a folding knife in a pocket and this in a pocket. I don't know, but do keep that in mind that the legalities of carrying this could get you in certain, in some places in bad situations on the bad side of the law. I don't agree with those laws, but it is a fact. Now, the fact is the only person that would ever need to know that you had this would be the person who attacked you. So the fact is, I doubt if you're going to get a concealed carry if you use this in self-defense. I doubt if you would ever get that because they can't prove that it was concealed at all. So the other thing is, this is not something that you would see somebody carrying in an office. 
I mean, some offices, maybe when I worked for the government, I wouldn't shy away from carrying this. It wouldn't bother me, but I was in a completely different office day. I wasn't wearing a suit. I wasn't doing like spreadsheets and things like that. I was working in the anti-terrorism field and department doing counter surveillance. So this, I would absolutely recommend to anyone that, hey, like if you just question your safety in the areas you live, especially with uh, the rise in crime and things like that, this would be something I would look at. So the there you go, guys. I really don't have much else to say about it, except it is a very very well thought out tool for one specific purpose and one specific purpose only. And it, I'm sure it excels at that. I can just feel that it would. So if you're looking for something like this, reach out to Steel City Cutlery on Instagram. And uh, he, he seems like a pretty good dude. I've talked to him. I want to try and get him on the channel. Uh, and we can talk about this knife more in depth on a podcast style video. So guys, like I said, don't, I don't have much else to say about it. I've got to get this off to Bobby D. I am going to regret being able to, I'm going to regret not having this around. Um, I may look at getting one because I did like having this um, a few times. I went a couple places where this would be something I would want to carry. So there you go, guys. Steel City Cutlery Fang. So go check them out on Instagram. Guys, that's it. Let's turn this around and do some final thoughts. Like I said, guys, this is a great, great little addition to your kit if you're looking for a dedicated self-defense tool that is easy to use, requires very little training. Uh, it is awesome. I'm going to hate to see it go because this is going to go off sometime in the next few days to Bobby D over at the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you don't follow Bobby's channel, you probably should because Bobby is big time into this kind of this kind of thing. I've taken martial arts for years, uh, but Bobby is definitely more into like the Pical and Eskrima and things like that that I am not. So go check out his channel. A little shout out to him. Guys, that's it on this one. I love y'all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I did that all wrong. Guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but tell me why. I can't change that content if you don't tell me what you don't like. Uh, if you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. But if you do hit the bell icon, make sure you've got notifications turned on your device or you will not get notified of everything I put up every day. Um, other ways you can do it, if you want to do it financially, like I said in the beginning, ton of affiliate links, including tools, anything you purchase on any of them supports the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And if you're using the Amazon affiliate links that I built down below with a lot of recommended EDC stuff, anything you purchase after you click through there does not have to be the item you clicked on still supports the channel. So do all your shopping with my affiliate links. Um, other ways you can do it. I have a membership down below in the description. Uh, it's a tier based thing where it's based on tiers. So pick the tier that gets you what you want out of the memberships. But everyone saves $5 off my sharpening service and everyone has access to the Gilded Server. But if you're a premium tier member, you have access to the sharpening tutorial series I've built that is exclusively for them. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. Uh, I can save you 10% for any purchase anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. with my coupon code Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, all one word, no spaces, Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in a video. I don't like the fact that that just rang like that. Guys, that's it. I love y'all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.